guys, I was just reading the news. Did you hear the universe might be a hologram? Humans originated as a hybrid between chimps and pigs? Everything you need to know about popcorn, but we're afraid to find out? Could the Large Hadron Collider spawn a planet-devouring black hole? Squeezing breasts can prevent cancer. Alcohol more harmful than heroin. Woman becomes pregnant in the mouth with baby squid after eating calamari? Fast lane to autism. Living near freeways. Science figures out how cats drink. Semen is an antidepressant? Oh, quantum physics proves there is an afterlife. I know what you're thinking. Those sound like something out of the onion. But unfortunately, those are all real science headlines that I found, and I didn't have to look that hard. Some of them are a bit overblown, and some, well, maybe they're pushing an agenda, and some are actually just complete BS. Figuring out what's good science and what's bad science when you're reading science news is one of the best skills that you can put right up here in your thinking machine, and it'll serve you for your whole life. With that in mind, I'd like to give you my tips for how to read science news. Is the headline of the article a question? This one really ruffles my feathers for some reason. <laughs> Although, it occurs to me that sometimes we do it for YouTube videos. But it's different for the news. Don't start your article off with a question. I'm here to ask you questions. I am the one who is wondering things, and you are the one who is going to give me the information. It's really a very simple deal. When you start your article off with a question, it kind of makes me wonder if you even know what you're talking about. What's with all those weird quotes that people use in their headlines? Zebra stripes mystery explained. Like, was it actually explained, or was it... Like, fake explained? Or is it a fake zebra? I don't understand the quote. After considering number one, maybe it's best if we just skip the headline altogether. Yeah, skip the headline. Do you know the difference between a press release and journalism? Like, really, do you? I mean, one is hopefully fact-checked and balanced and analyzes both sides of a story, and the other one is, well, it's marketing materials. But there's a lot of websites out there that package press releases to look like real news, and it's important that you know the difference. Press releases aren't untrue by design, but it's important that you take them with a big grain of salt. I mean, you wouldn't go to a car dealership and take the salesman's word for everything. You've gotta go home and do your research. I just wanna reiterate, because I see this stuff shared all the time, Press releases are not news. Look for warning words. These are the words that'll tell you if there's a little bit of uncertainty in the article, or maybe they don't know quite as much as they're letting on. Words like link, correlation, association, possible, the study suggests, or my favorite, scientists were baffled. Scientists are baffled all the time, but they don't write research papers about it. And they certainly don't sit around with reporters going, oh, you know, I was just, I'm just totally baffled right now. Uh, do you want to write an article about it? Is the scientific method being applied? Take time to check if what you're reading has been peer-reviewed. Or was it presented at a conference? Is this just some scientist talking on a street corner? While far from perfect, our peer review system for publishing science has worked out pretty well, considering. And good journalists and writers, well, they'll treat a research finding like a hypothesis, and they'll scour that work and the work of others for data that either supports or refutes it. And they'll look to outside sources as sort of controls. Good science writing applies the scientific method. Ask yourself, does someone stand to gain financially from me reading this article? If you're reading that news on any commercial news website with advertising or subscriptions, then the answer is yes. Somebody wants you to read that. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. People need to make money to support their operations and to pay their writers, but that desire had better be outweighed by the desire to inform you. Did the person who wrote the article actually do any research of their own? Are there quotes from the actual researcher, or does it say something like, according to the press release? More importantly, are there quotes from someone besides the researcher? Now, some science is so complicated that it can help to have someone just explain it to you. And that's actually my favorite kind of science to both read about and write about. But that should never be all that they do. They should still apply a critical eye. Honestly, if someone just rewords the press release, they are the worst. Is the story about a new breakthrough? Or is the story trying to scare you? The media has always been obsessed with these kinds of stories because, frankly, they know you're going to click on them. But their ratio of truthiness to hype sometimes leaves a little to be desired. Frankly, most stuff isn't as scary as it's made out to be. But some stuff is scary, like antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Knowing to tell the difference between hype and reality is pretty hard. On the other hand, breakthroughs are pretty rare, which is why we give big awards for them and stuff. Here's a common one. Possible cure for cancer in mice. Now, curing cancer in mice isn't the same as curing cancer in humans, so is that a breakthrough? We've cured a lot of cancers in mice, and unfortunately, not so many in humans. 
Now maybe one day one will lead to the other, but for a lot of cancers, your best bet is to turn into a small furry creature. Remember, when it comes to scare stories and breakthrough stories, just because a lot of people have read something doesn't make it any more true. Does this story fit in nicely with commonly held beliefs or stereotypes? Okay, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but does it fit in a little too well with commonly held beliefs and stereotypes. Recently a paper came out about mapping brain connections in male and female brains, and they found some differences, which is fine, but then they applied those differences to things like men being better at reading maps, or women being better at organizing the house or something. Be wary of papers that want to fit a scientific story into a nice, neat social construct because that's not how science works. But this also works with science that challenges previously held beliefs and stereotypes because a lot of times controversy can make an easy substitute for accuracy. It's like that old saying, does this sound too good to be true? Because a lot of times, well, it is too good to be true. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't true. You should approach every story with a balance of curiosity and skepticism. As Michael Shermer says, you should have an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. The internet is big, and it's accessible, and it's given us access to more information than we ever thought possible, and that's clearly a good thing, but it also means that anybody who wants to donate two cents can pop that in the piggy bank of human knowledge. As traditional media continues to cover less and less science than ever before, this is clearly a very good thing. Or it can be a bad thing, for all those reasons I talked about before. Unfortunately, flows uphill, as they say, and the more that writers, journalists, bloggers, Facebook pages, Tumblr pages get things wrong, then society loses trust in science as a whole. It's like a modern version of the boy who cried wolf. Chances are you're not an expert, and, well, journalists aren't experts either. It's just that the good ones operate under a set of guiding principles to let them become temporary experts, and find real experts when that doesn't work. Some people are way better at this than others. I'm going to put a list of my favorites down in the description. People who are good at getting things right, pointing out what's wrong, and being entertaining while they do it. Please feel free to leave your favorites down in the comments. You know, every science story should really end with something like, well, now we just have a tiny bit more information about science, but we're going to need to do a lot more experiments to figure out if any of it's really true. And come to think of it, nothing in science has ever really proven true. It's just continually supported by new evidence. And, well, actually, maybe it's best we don't take any life-changing conclusions from all this and we just enjoy the process. Yeah, let's do that.